Hello and welcome to the session in which we will keep working with stock valuation. And what's a stock valuation? It's determining a value for the stock based on some model, based on some formula. In this session, we will be working with the non-constant growth model. In the prior sessions, we looked at the constant dividend. And if you're, if you're not familiar, that's the simplest model. And it's usually used for the preferred stock. And we looked at the constant growth model or the constant growth of the dividend model, which is for Miriam Gordon, which is a little bit more realistic than the constant model. Now, both of these models are not realistic for the real world. Why? Because common stock, preferred stock might, but common stock don't pay the same amount of dividend over time. So the one is not always equal to D2, it's not always equal to D3, D3 is not equal, equal to D4, and we explain why. And the constant growth model, it assumes that the dividend grows at a certain percentage, like 5%, and it does so forever. That's, those are not realistic, not realistic assumptions, but they are a good starting point to analyze the company. While constant growth and zero growth dividend model are simpler, they don't account for the way companies actually grow. Because what happened in the real world, most businesses experience a mix of rapid initial growth followed by a stable longer term growth phase. And this is how the real world works. When you start as a company and you have a great product, you would just rock it at the, at the, at the beginning, just keep on going up until you reach a peak and once you reach that peak you will start to flatten and it you will grow at a uh, at a specific rate and that rate is usually lower than the initial rate so the non-constant growth model bridges this gap offering a better way to value stocks for company in dynamic stages of growth because the other two model one is good for preferred stock the other one is good for stable constant growth model is an excellent model for stable companies companies that that, that that are already mature and they expect to grow dividend at five percent for the next 15 years that's fine that's great otherwise the real world companies fluctuate a lot so we need another model like the constant the non-constant growth model and this is what we will discuss in this session before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our corporate finance course is best for online students and students who are taking corporate finance courses. We cover financial statements, discounted cash flow, stock valuation, bond valuation, NPV and capital investment decisions, cost of capital, risk and return, as well as other topics. Our course include lectures as well as multiple choice questions. Go ahead and start your free trial today. No obligation. We are here to help. Your success starts here. Now, why do we use a non-constant growth model? Because think of startup companies. Think of companies that they are skyrocketing with double-digit growth in their early years. Think of Amazon and, it, and its prime. Think of Netflix when the streaming was booming. Those companies were growing at a at a very high rate. Eventually, they level off. So how do we value these companies? Over time, things will slow down. You can never grow forever at a high rate. What happens if you are growing at a high rate? You're going to have competitors coming in, then your growth rate will start to flatten. So you cannot grow forever. It slows down and settles into a more predictable growth rate as the market mature because everybody com comes in, everybody wants to make the profit. Therefore, your growth rate will slow down as a result because everybody else now is eating the same lunch. So that's, that's the non-constant growth in action. An exceptional period followed by steady sustainable growth. That's fine. For example, ChatGPT, that's what it's going through now. Now, obviously, we don't have the actual number for ChatGPT chat GPT but from users it's skyrocketing from a user's perspective well eventually at some point chat GPT will start to flatten same thing Nvidia is going through right now because of the AI boom it's growing double digit but it cannot go like this forever so unlike the constant growth model which assume dividend climb as as the, at the same pace forever the non-constant model account for this supernormal or temporary growth phase because why we 
we're going to have to go through those phases. Therefore, we have to be realistic. Eventually, the growth rate levels out, reflecting the long-term prospect of the company. And this method is useful because dividend growth often start erratic or start at zero and only becomes predictable later when the company matures. This is how it works. So investors will use this model to figure out the stock's current value by discounting future cash flows back to the day's dollar. We're back to the same formula. What's the formula? You discount the future dividend to the present value and that's your stock price. The only difference here is the dividend are not the same and they are growing at different rates. Now, why constant growth model matters? Because most companies go through this. They shine in scenarios like companies entering a bull market. When a company is entering a bull market like Tesla, what's going to happen? It's going to have a rocket. It's going to rocket at the beginning. It's going to go up tremendously, gain market share, revenues, more earnings. Then eventually it will slow down. Or if a tech firms with a breakthrough product. Right now we're dealing with NVIDIA. Why? Because everybody wants their computer chips for their AI. Well, NVIDIA is going with a breakthrough product. AI, as a result, it's supplying this industry. Startup scaling rapidly in early years. What could be some examples? Uber, Facebook. Those are in a non-constant growth model. Non-constant means they are fluctuating a lot, a lot of growth early on, and eventually they would level off. So investors benefit by forecasting high growth over a set number of years before shifting their outlook to a more stable return. Because as an investor, you might be investing in a company for 15, 20 years. For example, post AI, what's, what's, what, what's going to be the industry? Most likely it's going to be cloud computing. Cloud computing right now, it's not in that skyrocket phase because it's not, they did, they did not show a feasible product, but once they start to show a minimum viable product, a product that's really going to be commercialized, cloud computing would skyrocket, then it would level off. Right now, we don't know where we are in the AI. We could be here in the AI, we could be here, we could be at the bottom, we could be at the top. We don't know where we are in the AI industry. We don't know this until after the fact. But we know for a fact in the cloud computing, we are still flat right now. Eventually, it's going to skyrocket once we can commercialize this product. So let's break down the constant, the non-constant growth stock valuation. Let's see how it works. To compute it, to compute the stock price under this model, non-constant growth, we typically follow these steps. First, identify the super normal growth period and estimate dividend payment during this phase. This is where it skyrocketed. We compute the stock value at the point when the growth become constant using the constant period dividend discount formula eventually. Once it becomes constant, then we'll use this formula. Then we'll discount all the cash flow to the present. So simply put, it's like it's a two stage. First, we have to compute the super normal growth rate. Then we have to compute the constant growth dividend because eventually the company will mature and will start to grow at a certain rate. And we would use the constant growth. Eventually, all companies will end up in the constant growth, or at least they hope so if they make it, right? Then we discount all the cash flows to the present value. The best way to illustrate this is to work examples to illustrate what we just said. It's pretty simple. If you understand the time value of money, and if you understand the constant growth model, you already know how to deal with this, especially I'm just going to tell you up front, the deferred annuity. If you know how to deal with deferred annuities or deferred, uh, deferred payment, you should be good to go. But the best way is to look at various examples. Let's, let's take a look at this example. Let's assume a company won't pay any dividend for the first five years. Okay, that's great. So let's take a look at this on a timeline. So we have a company, zero, one, two, three, four, five. No dividend. And in year six, it plans to pay 50 cents per share. It means it's going to start to pay the first one here, 50 cents. This is year six. Then we have six, seven, and it's going to grow going forward at 10%. Let's put the growth rate below. And the growth rate will be at G equal to 10% going forward. So this is 8, 9, theoretically to infinity. The required rate of return are equal to 20%. Can we compute the price of this company? And the answer is yes, we can. Well, first let's compute the dividend after 
the super normal growth by year six. How do we compute this? Can we compute this? And the answer is no. Uh, I'm sorry, the answer is yes, we can. If we are, if we know, the first time it pays dividend is right here, 50 cent. What we can do, we can find P4. Why can we find P4? Because P4, if we, if we compute P4 equal to what? P4 equal to D5 divided by R minus G. So let's go ahead and compute this. D5 is 50 pennies. R minus G, which is 20%, minus 10%, 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1, that's 10%. And if we take 5 divided by 0 0.1, that's going to give us a price of $5. Therefore, P4 equal to $5. Well, that's helpful, but that's P4. How about we want to find out what's the price of the stock today? Well, what do we do then? At this point, all what we have to do is to discount, discount the price to the present value. How do we discount the price to the present value? I hope you know how to do this. We'll take P4, the price in P4, we'll take P4 divided 1 plus R. 1 plus R. Now remember, 1 plus R raised to the fourth power. Why? Because we're discounting this. It's a one payment. And we're discounting the payment. And this is where the time value of money comes into place. So P5, the price at, at P5 is $5. This is the price of the stock. 1 plus R, what's R? R equal to 20%. 1.2 raised to the fourth power equal to $5 divided by 2.07, which is equal to $2.41. So the price is $2.41. Let me show you the detailed computation. So the dividend is 50 pennies. The growth from year six onward is 10%. We can find the price at year four, which is D5 divided by R minus G. And the formula will give us a price at P4 at $5. Now what we have to do, discount P4 back to today. We'll take P4 divided one, 1 plus R raised to the fourth power, which is P4 equal to $5, R equal to 20%. If we plug in the formula, we'll get $2.41. So this is how we come up with this price. So what happened here, the first five, year, the first five years, there was nothing, then we started to grow. And this is typically how, how companies how companies take off. The first few years, they may not have any dividend because if they have profit, they don't, they're not going to distribute the profit. Why not? Because they need it for internal financing. They need any profit they have to do what? To reinvest in the company. Therefore, they don't pay any dividend, which is that's a very realistic, realistic uh, assumption. But the growth rate, 10%, that's really a huge growth rate. The company is growing at 10%. But again, here we are dealing with textbook so it doesn't matter what growth rate we input. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. We have Adam Company recently dispersed an annual dividend of $1.25. The company anticipate paying $104, $102, and a dollar as dividend over the next three years. Following that, the dividend is anticipated to decrease by 1% each year. What's the value of one share of stock at 14% rate of return? Well, let's look at the dividend first. Let's see what we are giving. And we're going to look at a timeline here. And we have one, two, three. So the dividend in year one is one dollar and four cent. The dividend in year two, one dollar and two pennies, and the dividend in year three is a is a dollar. Now, going forward, going forward, the dividend will increase by one percent. What does that mean? It means if we want to find the dividend in year four, let me use a different color here. If we, if we want to find the dividend in year four, how do we figure this one out? The dividend in year four is a dollar times one plus 0.01, 1%. This is the dividend in year four. Now, 
how do we compute the price of this stock? Well, let's compute the value as of year three. How do you find the value as a year three? Do you know how to find the value of year three? P3 equal to D4 divided by R minus G. Well, what is D4? D4 is the dividend will do what? Actually, the dividend is anticipated to decrease. Well, that's interesting. Well, what does that mean? It means the growth rate is negative. The growth rate is negative. It's going to be 1 minus 0 0.1. What does that mean? It means it's going to be 1 minus 0.1. So we're going to take a dollar times 1 minus 0.1 is 0.9. It means it's going to give us 0.9. Therefore, D4, you got to be careful. It's decreasing. So it's going to be, I I, I misread it. I, that, that was not uh, on purpose. I misread it. Just be careful. It's 90 pennies divided by R minus G. R is what? R is the required rate of return is 14%. And how much is G? G is negative. What's that going to do? It's going to be 15%. Why? Because 1, uh, it's going to be 14. Uh, it's going to be minus, minus 1. That's going to give us plus. Therefore, it's going to give us 15% in the denominator. Uh, well, what's that going to do? It's going to give us a present value for P3 at $6 and 60 cent but that's p3 that's the price at p3 is this what we are looking at absolutely not we need the price today we need the price at p0 how do we find the price of p0 now we have to discount we have to discount all the payments what are all the payments the dividend 104 102 a dollar and we have to discount six dollars and sixty cent all discounted at what rate you guessed it 14% so let me let me let me try if I if, if I can do this here so we're gonna have 1.04 divided by 1.14 raised to the first power and that's going to give us 0.92 so that dividend today is worth 0.12 that's the first dividend so we took care of this one now we're gonna discount the 1.02 at 14% raised to the second power and if my math is right that's going to give us 78 78 pennies now we're going to this so we'll take care of this 1.02 then we're going to discount this one dollar so we're going to discount the dollar at 1.14 raised to the third power and this should give us 0.675 so I'm going to circle what we need. I'm going to circle them in green. So this way. So we're going to add this and this and this to find the value. We're not done yet. We still have to discount 6.6 .6 at 1.14. And that's three years from now. And that's going to be $4 and 45 pennies now rounded if we add up all these present values the 78 pennies the 91 pennies the 67 pennies and the 4.45 this should give us approximately rounding six dollars and 82 cent of a stock price what should you do now as a student you should go to farhat lectures look at additional resources practice questions lectures whether you are in accounting finance cpa cma cfa candidate investing in yourself is the best investment you can make good luck study hard and of course stay safe